the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the world-famous operetta, Robin Hood, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, Dorothy Kirsten. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're happy to welcome back as a guest on the Railroad Hour the charming Metropolitan Opera Soprano, Dorothy Kirsten, who appears tonight as Maid Marian in Reginald de Colvin's most famous operetta, Robin Hood. My real name was Robert, Earl of Huntington. But when I joined the band of outlaws in Sherwood Forest, I took the name of Robin Hood. The sheriff of Nottingham, who was the guardian of my estate and the lifelong enemy, seized my title and lands from the day I came of age declaring that I was an imposter and that the real Earl of Huntington was a follower of his named Guy of Gisborne. There was only one man in England powerful enough to help me, the king, and he was drawn to the crusade. And so I decided to join the outlaws until he returned in an attempt to right some of the wrongs imposed upon the poor by the powerful sheriff of Nottingham. It was a gay life we led in Sherwood Forest, full of camaraderies and fellowship. <laughs> what on earth are you laughing at, Friar Tuck? <laughs> the, the expression on that fellow's face when we, when we held up the stagecoach and took his purse this afternoon. <laughs> well, yeah, that was one of the richest men in all England, and one of the stingiest. You need spare no pity for him. <laughs> when, I, when I think of his face, <laughs> ah, that is a good way to live, Robin. Take from the rich and give to the poor. Good haul today, Robin. We must celebrate. You're right, Alan. A thank you to be all around, landlord. The best in the house. And it will ye quaff with me, my lad. And it will ye quaff with me. It is a draft of not brown ale I offer unto ye. Coming in the tankard, lad, it gives a heart forlorn. Oh, here's a friend to everyone, this stout John Barleycorn. Oh, laugh, lad, and laugh, lad, to make you sound to hail. Through all my days I'll sing the praise of brown October air. sitting for some time laughing and joking among ourselves when suddenly there was a scuffle on one side of the tavern and young Alan Adele pushed the lad I'd never seen before in front of us. Keep your hands up, you big louse. There's Robin Hood. 
Now, if you have any more questions, ask them to his face, not behind his back. Well, well, what's this all about? This point size stripling who calls himself a cavalier has been asking too many questions, Robin. I am a cavalier. <laughs> a cavalier, eh? And what do you do as a cavalier? I do as all cavaliers do. I joust, I fight. I make love to pretty girls. <laughs> <laughs> a cavalier makes love to pretty girls, does he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's wrong with that? <laughs> my young cavalier. What are you doing in Sherwood Forest? Does your uh, mother know you're out? <laughs> you're a very rude fellow, and my affairs are no concern of yours. Uh, I was only trying to be helpful. I don't need any help, thank you. I came to Sherwood Forest in search of Robert, the Earl of Hunting. Did you know? And why did you come here in search of the Earl? Because I was told that here was where I would find him. And here I have found him. Hmm. You're a bold lad. Can you point out the Earl to me? I can if you'll give me a mirror. A mirror? Oh, you see your statue. Bold and clever. Well, what is the business? I suppose you know that you're a man to be married. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, oh. A man to be married. I have the king's command with me. He signed it before he left on a crusade. Here, see for yourself. How do you happen to come by this parchment? Mine is still at you. Oh? Who is your mistress? The Lady Marion. It is she that the king has selected for you. Hmm. Well, now understand this. Sir Robert, Earl of Huntington, is not the man to marry the first girl who is offered to him. I am rather particular. How are you indeed? Well, you may as well understand that my mistress is not a girl who needs to marry the first man who was offered to her. She is a steed by to you. She will have a very in the her seat. Did you bring a likeness of her with you? No. But if you want to know what she looks like, He's my cousin, and we are said to save me something. Well, then I'm afraid you must tell your cousin that I'm not ready to marry, and that I must, therefore, uh, respectfully refuse her. You refuse her? You refuse her? Oh, no, you don't, my fine fellow. She refuses me. <laughs> <laughs> I fail to see anything particularly amusing about what I have just said. You're a daughter. What? No. You're in Canada. But I, yes? I, I... Tell me more, Lady Marion. I told you I was the Lady Marion. I told you. I came as a cavalier and I... Uh, no I, use. Uh, no use. No? No. Oh. Well, if I'm caught, I'm caught. Now tell me, why did you come to Sherwood Forest, Lady Marion? Well, to see what manner of man I'm commanded to marry. I took the place of the page who was delivered the king's order to the sheriff of Nottingham. The sheriff is custodian of my fortune. Well, then you'd better watch your fortune well, Lady Marion, because the sheriff has seized mine and declared Guy of Gisborne to be the rightful Earl of Huntington. Then, if the king's orders were to become known to the sheriff of Nottingham, he would now need to fly of Gisborne. <laughs> you marry no one but me. Indeed, sir. Why, only a few moments ago, you passed me up to the future. I think I meant that seriously? Why, who do you suppose it was who begged the king for the hand of the lady now? You? I saw you at the court once a long time ago. And when I saw you, I said, there is my lady. I loved you then, and I've loved you since. I knew that someday we would meet, and I would try to win you for my own.
and wait until I can redeem my name and my fortune and come for you? Oh, yes, Robin. Forever it may be. the second act of Robin Hood, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest, Dorothy Kirsten. In the leafy days of the woodland blades of Sherwood Greenwood Tree, where the red deer springs and the cross of things is the dearest part to me, is the dearest part to me. For never a care in the world comes there, and never you'll hear a sigh. As you love and laugh, as you quip and quaff, so gaily the days go by. Then a hay full of matty green wood, say I, and kiss me above you. Let mine be the life that is free from strife, where friends are stars and true. And hey, let mine be the life that is free from strife, where friends are so and Yes, Maid Marian returned to a castle, and I remained with the outlaws in Sherwood Forest. One day, as we were riding through the woods, Alan and Dale hurried up in great excitement and told us a band of tinkers had entered the forest. Since Sherwood Forest seemed a strange place for tinkers, we made our way stealthily to a spot where we could watch them at work. Ding, tank, 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 get the tank, 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 here are hammer ring. When a train is fit, we call it and we quit, just happy and gay as a king. Remember the prize. 
One hundred pounds to any one of you who can deliver the outlaw Robin Hood to me for hanging. <laughs> hey, he's somewhere in this forest. And disguised as poor journeyman thinkers, we should have little trouble in making our way to him. We'll catch this vagabond Robin and hang him to the highest gallows in Merry England. So we uh, <clears throat> be on our way, my friend? At once, and with all possible speed. And so the sheriff of Nottingham and his fellow tinkers hunted in vain through Sherwood Forest, and at last gave up in disgust and went home. I thought I'd gotten the best of the sheriff, but a few weeks later, Alan Adele came once again with news. The page stopped me at the edge of the forest. She told me that the sheriff of Nottingham was forcing Lady Mary, the Mary Guy of Gisborne, had, that she wanted you to come to her at once. I'll go immediately. Careful, Robin. This may be some kind of crap. I'll have to chance it. I left the forest and rode as fast as possible toward Lady Marion's estate. I found her alone in the garden. And I stood there spellbound, listening to the sound of her voice. I came as soon as I got your message. Message? I sent you no message. You sent no message? That's right. I sent the message. So we meet at last, Robin Hood. I am Robert Earl of Huntington, as you know full well. No, 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 no. You're Robin Hood the outlaw. And tomorrow at dawn, I'm going to hang you from the tallest gallows in England. I've been looking forward to it for months. 
At dawn, you die. The sheriff and his followers carried me off to prison. And there they bolted the doors and left me. And in the morning when they came to get me... <laughs> when they came to get me... <laughs> who, 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 who are you? Hey, Robin Hood. I, uh, I'm Friar Chuck. And if you'll excuse me, now that you've so kindly unlocked the door, I'll be on my way. Now, now, now just a minute. Let I... me pass, Sheriff of Nottingham. I'm a friar of the church, a holy man. You've no power to stop me. <laughs> but, but where is Robin Hood? Far from here by now, where you'll never find him. <laughs> There's the castle just ahead. We're safe, my darling. In a few moments, we'll be with the king. <laughs> You know, I would like to have seen the sheriff of Nottingham's face when he opened the door to that cell and saw Friar Tuck. How did you ever manage it? Well, it was Friar Tuck's idea. The outlaws were watching when the sheriff took me. And after he left, they overpowered the guards. Friar Tuck took my place, and off we went. It really wasn't necessary for the friar to stay, but he wanted to see the sheriff's face himself. There's the castle. Yes. Now our life together begins. Robin Hood, the outlaw, is no more. And Robert, Earl of Huntington, shall take you back to try. Oh, promise me that someday you and I will take our love together to some star where we can be alone. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Dorothy Kirsten will be back in just a moment. Our thanks to the supporting cast, Lou Merrill, who played Friar Tuck, Roland Morris as Alan Adale, and Marvin Miller as the sheriff. Robin Hood, with book and lyrics by Harry B. Smith and music by Reginald DeCoven, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Gene Holloway. And now here is lovely Dorothy Kirsten.
Well, Dorothy, it was wonderful, as always, singing with you. And I'm looking forward to doing The Princess Pat with you and Lucille Norman next week. I'm looking forward to it, too, Gordon. And the week following each talk your summer show, don't you? Yes, Dorothy. And we're really planning something special. Trips on the summer show train to years past, where we'll live again some of the laughter, the tears, the memories, and the music from the turn of the century to the present day. It sounds wonderful, Gordon. And I'll certainly be looking to you next week. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Dorothy. Robin Hood was presented by Special Arrangement with the Pam Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae is currently starring in the Warner Brothers Technicolor musical hit, The Daughter of Rosie O'Grady. Dorothy Kirsten appeared through the courtesy of Lucky Strike Light Up Time. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. And now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Oh!